Howdy folks, Amy and Brian continuing my let's play of Corpse Party Book of Shadows. Welcome to part 11. This is part of my Halloween October Marathon. Right where I last left off in my uh, part 10, I finally completed chapter 6. And now it's time to move on to chapter 7. Second to last chapter, I'm almost there. Tooth. Yakadon Senior High School, student council room, 4.30 p.m. Hey, Mr. President, don't forget about tomorrow. Hmm, what's tomorrow? Please tell me I can kick you. Absolutely not. So what's happening tomorrow? Hey, no violence in the student council room. We've been over this. It's all your damn... It's your own damn fault for forgetting. Ow, stop, please. If I've forgotten something important, I sincerely apologize. So just tell me what it is already. Use your words, not your feet. It's this room. Spring cleaning, I mean. It's full of balls. Is this a storage shed or something? How long has it been... Has it even been since the sports festival? Oh yeah, that's right. You were asking to schedule a cleaning day. Ow! You completely put it out of your mind, didn't you? No, I swear I penciled it in somewhere. Your recommendations are important to me and to the student council as well. You're a person, not a corporation. Talk like one. Fine, I forgot, okay? It's not like I don't have enough on my plate as it is, though. Do you have any idea how much I'm expected to do? I'm sorry. <laughs> Good enough for me. I forgive you. What's your problem anyway? Wait, what? Tough love from your trusted clerk. Sometimes you just have to admit your mistakes and move on. Though the manly approach to presidency has its merits too. Mitsuki? Just make sure you keep at it. Desertion is not an option. Don't think you can run away from your post if the going gets tough. You got that? Yeah, I got it. You just don't get it, Tomohiro. Minko is my bride, so hands off. Like hell, I'm not giving her up to the likes of you. Besides, you got that Nana girl, right? Don't you dare do timer. You're so clueless. It only gets really good once you've gotten at least three girls. Everybody knows that. Sounds like you guys are having fun. Is that a game? Oh, Yamamo. You want in on this? It's a game where you use a stylus to massage and kiss girls. And you can go out with three at once. What? I'm glad you're enjoying your little romp. But keep it to one girl, you lowlifes. Ow! You two remember what tomorrow is, right? Mm, what's tomorrow? Oh, boy. I had no idea any of this was going on in the student council room that day. I had other things on my mind. Specifically, a certain boy. Yakan Senior High School, Class 2-4, After School. My name is Toko Kurosaki. I've been wafling for some time on whether or not to say anything, but finally I decided to bite the bullet and ask his best friend Kurosaki. Hey, hey, quick question. Did you have a girlfriend? Hmm? No, I'm pretty sure he's single. Why? Well, uh, heh. <laughs> kind of might have my sights set on him, I guess. Seriously? Wow, that's great news. I'll definitely be rooting for you. Oh, but... Well, he's not a particularly sociable individual when you get right down to it. Going out with him might not be all that fun for you. Hmm. But I hear that despite his obvious popularity with the ladies, he's never once so much as touched anyone. 
Isn't that kind of a bad sign though? No, quite the contrary. It gives him a nice clean image. Oh ho. This was Kensuke Kurosaki, who'd known Yuya Kazami, aka the boy I liked, pretty much all his life. I figured I'd come to him for all the information I needed in my conquest, since he was pretty much guaranteed to know Yuya's dating history. And so far, things seem to be going really well. I mean, not only did I confirm Yuya wasn't seeing anyone, but I got his best friend's blessing too. <laughs> and confirmed that he really wasn't the showy, obnoxious, cool guy type. Hehe, <laughs> that suited me just fine. Kurosaki, hey. Ah. Kurosaki was understandably rather startled by the extraordinary agitated female voice that suddenly rang out from behind his head. But that's Helgo Mitsuki for you. <laughs> she was standing in the classroom doorway, arms folded across her chest, looking like some angry deity about to cast judgment upon the world. And she had that deathly gleam in her eyes, the one that could fell the mightiest warrior before he even had a chance to draw a sword. Didn't I tell you today was spring cleaning in the student council room? A and I told you I can't, because I have club today. Come on, Fukuroi, back me up here. I wouldn't go that route. It's just easier to give in. What? Yeah, this was completely Hellgirl's work. All the complexion was gone from Fukuroi's face. He was a man with a demon on his back. Whip at the ray fully prepared to bring him divine punishment upon all who oppose her. He was right. It was easier just to give in. <laughs> this sounds like fun. Can I join you guys? Oh hell, by all means. The more the merrier. Mitsuki then grabbed the nape of Kurosaki's neck and began dragging him out the door in a decidedly painful looking manner. He was like a teary-eyed chick caught in the talons of a burr of prey, struggling in vain as he was being carried off to meet his grisly end. You know, I'm not even in the student council. I just love watching these boys interact with Hellgirl Mitsuki. I couldn't wait to see more. I didn't even care that I had to clean in order to do it. I was a volunteer after all, so I was pretty much off the hook here. I could follow them at my own pace. No dragging for me. As soon as we left the classroom though, we ran to Yuya. Or rather, I did, as in I literally ran into him. I wasn't watching where I was going, and wound up slamming into him so hard that I fell over. Immediately, he reached out his hand to help me up and asked if I was alright. Now that's a white knight if I've ever seen one. What a fun evening this would be. I imagine it ending with me lying in bed, dreaming of Yuya's perfect face, inching ever closer to mine. But instead... Are you okay, Toko? Y yeah. It'll be alright. You'll feel better once you get it all out. Episode 7, Tooth. <laughs> uh. Was I right? I guess. I feel a little better. That's good. Are you okay to head back and rejoin the others then? Y yeah. Ryusuke, Ryusuke, God no, I'll bet it hurts real bad. I tied up your knee and thigh joints, that should help stop the bleeding. And we've got your leg right here, so don't worry about that. Ugh. Toko, we were in an old fashioned run down and probably condemned school building. None of us knew how we got here or even where here was. I just emerged from the girls' room with Emmy after losing my lunch, where Yuya, Okawa, Katayama, and Shimada were waiting. The whole hallway was in an absolute bloodbath after what had happened. 
Poor Katayama walked into some kind of booby trap and half and half his right leg was lopped off from the knee down. It looked excruciating. How was somebody supposed to handle a situation like this? Why did this have to happen at all? Ugh, it hurts. Ugh. The fuck is wrong with this school? Why would there be traps set up in here? Where the hell are even are we? Feels like somebody's screwing with us. Keep quiet. Ryosuke has been badly injured. Huh? The hell's your problem? You stepping? Stop it, please. This is what tagging along with Mitsuki and the others got me. I thought it was going to be a laugh riot, and at first it was great. We all went to the student council room where we met up with Katayama, Shimada, and Emmy, and started cleaning and goofing around. And then when we were done, Emmy suggested we all try out this new charm she discovered on the internet. She's nuts for that kind of stuff. We took out this simple white paper doll and we were all kind of fascinated. So we did as we were instructed. And then suddenly everything went dark. There was a violent shaking and then we were here in this old schoolhouse. No explanation. We just need to get out of here. We need to work together and, and get out of this horrible place. Let's, let's try to find an exit. What about Katayama? I'll carry him. Yuya? Yuya was so kind. You can always count on boys in times like these. Still, there was a potential problem with this course of action. Well, wait. What if there are more traps? If you're carrying someone piggyback, won't you be able to retract quickly enough to avoid him? You won't be able to retract quickly enough to avoid him. But, but... I know, we have to. What I'm thinking is we find a way out and ensure the road between here and there is safe. Then come back for Katayama. I'll agree to that. Y yeah. Ryosuke. Ryosuke, don't worry. We won't leave you behind. We won't, will we? Okawa was in a state of absolute panic. He just kept muttering to himself at Katayama's side. The two of them had always been extremely close. It's only natural he'd be worried. Though his concern kind of bored on obsession. But, uh, who's going to go? We could lose our own legs in the blink of an eye just walking around here. You're the one who said we should go find an exit in the first place, so you go. Shimada practically spit his answer at her. I hate people like him. Sure, he had a pretty face. That's basically all he had, though. People like him pose as models in men's journals, but they're not good for much else. He's got a lot of girls, too, but I'm not one of them. I can never get past his awful attitude. It's such a huge turnoff for me when guys act like that way. Not that I don't admire speaking with confidence and force. I try to do it myself whenever I can. But there's a difference between speaking forcibly and speaking in a way that belittles others. Shimada was basically just cold and uncaring. I'll go. I'm the one who's just as separating after all. Toko. I'll go too. Yuya? What a difference. Like night and day, kind, thoughtful people like him don't make flippant, flippant remarks. They just man up and get stuff done. I was crushing on him harder than ever. Because now not only did I think he was both cool and hot. I also gained a ton more respect for him. There's no need for everyone to go. One more person should be playing. Any takers? Dead silence. No volunteers, huh? Everybody just looked at one another. Then looked away as if they were ashamed of themselves. I... I... What do I do? Ryusuke... You'll be lonely here all by yourself, won't you? He was frantically shifting his gaze from one person to another. I've never seen him on so on the edge before. Finally, the silence was broken by a loud, shrill male voice. Definitely not whom I would have picked. Ah, God damn it! fine, I'll go. You stay here. Are you sure it's okay? Kurosaki said she'd go, and she's a girl, so I... I said I'm going. You wait here. You good for nothing, slack. Sack. 
You just get in the way anyway. All right, I'll stay here, Ryosuke. Good luck. Come on, let's go. If we don't hurry, Katayama could be in real danger. Toko, be careful, okay? I will. Was I scared? You bet I was scared. But in a situation like this, everybody has to work together. And as long as I had any willpower left in me, I wasn't about to give up. Plus, it didn't hurt that Yuya was with me, so I knew everything was going to turn out just fine. Down we go. infirmary was written on the play above the door. Somehow the room just felt like it would be deserted. I was oddly confident about that. Not sure why I felt that way, to be honest. But for good measure, I shouted, Is anybody in there? We still hadn't found Mitsuki, after all. I didn't hear her call back, though. So really, we had no business in this room whatsoever. Wait. Was that a key sticking out of the lock? Who would have locked the door but left the key? What would be the point? Whoa, what's up with that? The key's just sitting there. Uh, what are you doing? Hey, there could be boogeymen in there or something. And then what would we do? I figured better to lock him in and keep him out of our hair. And what exactly do you plan to do with that key? I'm going to hang on to it, of course. Stop tossing it around. That's dangerous. Don't you worry. I always catch whatever I throw. Hell, I can go even higher. Honestly. Pain in the ass. Shimada was such a pain in the ass. I really couldn't stand the guy. Yeah. <laughs> God, you're persistent. Look, you're very good at throwing and catching, okay? So just stop already. The ceiling in this place sure is high. Let's see if I can actually touch it. If I can touch it. Alley oops. Eh. The hell did it go? Eh, whatever. I don't give a shit. And now the infirmary was cut off from us if we need it. Brilliant. Ah, it's an exit. An honest-to-goodness exit. We can finally get out of here. I rushed over to the door, hopeful yet afraid, knowing it might not open, but praying this horrid place would show us at least a little mercy. Gingerly, I raised my hand and pushed on it, and it swung open without even the slightest hesitation. It seemed almost too easy. It was unnaturally dark outside, though and the rain was coming down so hard that peeking my head out for just a moment left my uniform completely soaked. Shamaya pushed past me, throwing the door open even wider with his usual lack of regard for anyone and anything around him. My clothes went from soaked to drenched in a matter of seconds. If I were to actually walk out into it, I'd feel like I'd drown. What is this place? It's way too dark out here. We in a forest, maybe? It's really coming down. If we went out there in the rainstorm like this, we get soaked to the bone. I wouldn't mind seeing that look on you. Anyway, we know we can get outside safely now. Let's go back and get Katayama. <laughs> Come on, Yuya. Despite our having found a way out, Yuya's demeanor hadn't changed a bit. He was standing back in the hall where he could watch over us while we also while also keeping an eye out for anyone else who might happen by. The model of maturity. Shimada on your hand. You guys go back if you want, but I'm leaving. 
What? I'm not about to stick around in this fucked up place any longer than I have to. Screw the others. I'm out of here. You can't be serious. Hell yeah, I'm serious. Those assholes are the ones who chose to stay behind. They're just gonna die one by one, and I say let them. <sighs> Didn't think you were quite that callous, but far be it from me to stop you. Say, Kurosaki, you wanna come with me? The tone in his voice said it all. He'd hit the ultimate low. After abandoning his friends to save his own hide, now he was he was now basically propositioning me. I really don't want to see you die. You've been real precious to me for quite some time, you know. With an obvious rehearsed and truly sickening pickup line. He really was the slime ball to end all slime balls. Unbelievable. What the hell's wrong with you? Get your eyes off me, you jackass. I couldn't believe he had the nerve to pull something like this. I felt like I may have been... That that may have been the first time I'd ever truly yelled at someone. I was absolutely living. And he wasn't even done. No, he still had plenty of salt left to throw in the wound. Oh, shut the hell up, you ugly bitch. Don't go getting the wrong idea. I was just trying to be nice and give you a ticket out of this hellhole. But if you don't want it, that's your loss. <laughs> you need to die already. This guy's a lost cause. You, yeah? Let's just go. My head was swimming. I was scared. I was angry. I was sad. Every negative emotion brought to the forefront and every positive emotion pushed away. I didn't look back. I just turned away from Shimada, walked over to Yuya's side and continued past him in the, into the hallway. Yuya had been watching all of this unfold from the other side of the room, and for a moment he just stood there staring blankly at Shimada. Eh? What the hell you look at? Get out of my sight, you spacey bastard. Shimada then drew a, drew a large knife from his breast pocket. Its tip struggled to glisten in the dull light of the room. But it did ultimately succeed. He began waving it around like a dumbass, probably thinking it made him look more menacing. Check it out. Just bought this baby yesterday. Not bad, huh? But I could put it to good use in a lot of ways. <laughs> You're an amusing fellow. Does that asshole really have 10 girlfriends? How is that even possible? And yet, I'm precious to him somehow? What a crock. How low of an opinion must he have of women in general to pull crap like that? There's just no excuse. I was indignant. I was fuming. I just kept cursing and mumbling as fast as I fast walked back to the third floor to meet up with the others. And all the while, Yuya was keeping pace with me, saying nothing at all. Always the model of maturity. Always even-tempered. He really was like a rock. Or maybe. Maybe he found my mutterings annoying and was just keeping quiet so I'd do the same. I didn't like that possibility one bit, so I mentally slapped myself in the cheek, forced positivity in my voice and tried to engage him in a cheery banter. You're far better you're a far better man than he is, Yuya. You've never said or done anything to her, lady, right? I mean, I know you've got a lot of women falling for you, but I've never once heard a single bad rumor about you from any of them. It's kind of amazing. I looked him square in the eyes, as if asking him, isn't that right? And for a moment, his eyes did meet mine, but then they went right back into the hall. Hmm, was he not used to receiving compliments from women? That seemed hard to believe. I'm not sure what you mean. He... <laughs> With a cute, innocent response. I must have come across as bipolar to him or something. One second I try to lighten the mood with small talk or compliments, and then I start to feel scared of the school again, or angry at Shimada, or sad for Katayama. My mind just couldn't make up its mind what to feel. Toko, Emmy, is anyone there? Isn't anyone there? Mitsuki. That was Mitsuki, wasn't it? It was coming it was coming from downstairs. Mitsuki's voice echoed up from below, but our friends were waiting for us above. 
for a moment, I wasn't sure which direction to go, but only for a moment. The fact is, our friends were very, very close. So close that it would be foolish not to tell them what was going on before chasing after Mitsuki. Come on, we need to check in with Emmy and the others, then follow that voice downstairs. Yuya just nodded and began running up the stairs, and I was right behind them. Sorry it took so long. We found the exit. Come on, we have to get moving. I was out of breath, staring down at the ground and talking to what I assumed would be three very attentive friends. But then I looked up. They were all there. But there was no immediacy, no urgency on anyone's face. Emi and Okawa weren't even looking at me, nor at Yuya, but at Katayama. They were fixated on his face, and each bore a sad, hopeless, empty expression. And they certainly weren't about to get moving. There was some general heaviness in the air. Something was very wrong. I gently reached out my hand and touched Emmy's shoulder. Well, what? What's going on? Toko, he's... Katayama's getting weaker. He's not going to make it. Ryusuke, why won't you talk to me? Say something, please. Ryusuke! Emmy's eyes were filled with tears. Okawa, too, was cradling Katayama's head and looked like he had been crying this whole time. His eyes were bright red and his nose was running. Yuya, still saying nothing, just walked over to Katayama's side, bent down, and began examining his wound. Yuya, we need to hurry. The four of us silently but ununanimously agreed that the best course of action was to pick up Katayama and bring him out through the exit we discovered. We had to be very, very quick about it or he would really die. I couldn't tell just by looking at him that his time was almost up. Kazami, can you carry him? Yeah, I could use your help getting him on my back though. Ryusuke, hang in there. We'll save you. As this all was going on, I had that nagging feeling like I was forgetting something. Of course, Mitsuki. We had to go find her. We couldn't just leave her behind after all. Yuya, I... Do you mind if I run downstairs to look for Mitsuki? If she wanders too far, she might... He didn't even have to say anything this time. His eyes told me the whole story. Got it. I know I can trust you with this task, they said. And that was enough for me. I shot off down the hall like a bullet. I was determined to find Mitsuki and rejoin everyone en route. I hurried down to the second floor. But Mitsuki's voice was coming from even farther down. I'd have to keep going to the first floor ahead of the others. All right then. Attempt to walk down the hallway northwest of the exit, or the hallway north of the exit. Oh, I see, down this way. And, or the hallway north of the exit. How about we just go right in front of it? Okay, we'll 
go here. Now, if I've got this place mapped out right in my head, I'll just be getting farther and farther from where we heard her voice this way. I should go back. decomposed corpse. Though kind of hard to tell, it appears to be the remains of a female senior high school student. She still seems to be loosely gripping her student ID name tag in one of her hands. Kurashiki Industrial High School, Leona Umora. here. If I kept running in circles like this, I'd never find her. I was in a state of panic, and I was allowing it to steer my path. Frustrated with the situation and with myself for choosing to give up and head back empty-handed, I forced myself to stop and turn. I was going to do what I should have done in the first place, call out Masuki's name with everything I had in me. And hope she responded. Mitsuki! Mitsuki, where are you? We're all here! No answer. Just the cold, lonely sounds of rain and wind bearing down on this old, dilapidated building. This may have been a fairly large school, but sound traveled well in here. If she were anywhere in this hallway, I'm sure she would have heard me. And if she were just here only minutes ago, she definitely would have been around now. Could have something have happened to her? Mitsuki! Time to go back up. Okay. Head towards the second, third floor stairway to your north. Ah, what? What is that? A g g ah. <laughs> Ever since that dumbass threw the damn key away. Head to the exit. Hmm? Well, what the hell was that? Well, it just appeared in front of me. From the looks of it, you're another victim dragged here against your will, no? Well, I'll tell you now, there's no escape from this school. There is nothing to be gained here but despair. Though, if you've got an iron will, you might be able to survive for a little while at least. Here, you should have this. Well, I guess we'll just have to sit back and watch that fucking translate. It'll help keep the wandering spirits at bay, though it only works once. So take it, get out of here, and fight like hell. 
stay alive, stay alive as long as you possibly can. The spirit vanished, but lying on the floor below where it, it had been was a gemstone. Specifically, a violet-colored gemstone, probably an amethyst. So I can use that to keep the wandering spirits at bay one time, huh? I guess he meant the full-body ones, or it would have kept him at bay, too. Either way, with this gem, I felt like I could actually get back to my friends safely. I was as hopeful as one could expect, all things considered. Of course, he also said there was no escape from here, but... It was it was my prerogative to believe that what I wanted to believe and ignore what I wanted to ignore. Back up we go. ghost it appears to be the ghost of a young boy I held the amethyst in front of me and approached the spirit and incredibly it actually worked both the ghost and the gem faded and disappeared the stairwell was now free to be transversed Emmy, are you okay? There was, like, a ghost at the bottom of the stairs. Where's everyone else? Come on, we have to get Kayama situated and get out of here. Emmy's face was absolutely wrecked with tears. And she was shaking her head violently. She wanted to tell me something, but the words just weren't coming. I had a really bad feeling about this. I ran past her to the bathrooms, to where Katayame was being lifted onto Yuya's shoulders where I left. Why? Katayama was back on the floor right where we had set him down when this whole ordeal began. Why wasn't he on Yuya's shoulders? What was going on? I had an inkling, but I didn't want to believe it, so I pushed it out of my mind. Yuya, what are you still doing here? We need to get Katayama ready to go. He didn't make it. What? Right after you left, he let out a huge scream, and then he just went limp. No. I didn't know what else to say. A person had just died. And not some stranger, but a person I knew. A friend. It was the strangest feeling. I kept looking at him and thinking, is he really dead? Is this really what a person looks like when he dies? Seeing him like that drained every last bit of energy I had in me. I fell to my knees, thoroughly defeated. Okawa says he isn't moving from Katayama's side. So what are we supposed to do now? Emmy and I couldn't stay near the body. We'd gone down to the second floor where we picked a corner and just stood there, trying to recompose ourselves. Yuya elected to stay with Okawa on the third floor, I guess to try and break him from his shock and help put some distance between him and Katayama. None of this felt real, or maybe I just didn't want it to be real. It was a nightmare. It had to be. I'd just sit up in my bed and it would all be over. Why did this have to happen? I'm not waking up. I don't get it. Hmm? I'm not waking up. I kept trying to tell myself this is all just a dream, but... Toko. 
My energy was weighing again. I sank to the ground, landing on my knees. Emmy followed my lead and put an arm around me for comfort. A friend had just died. He just died. God, why? Emmy and I looked at each other. We both heard them. Footsteps coming down the hall. It was too dark to make out who it was, but the gate was decidedly male. The two of us slowly and quietly rose to our feet, hit around the corner and peeked out, both terrified and curious as to whom or what we might see. There at the end of the hall, the figure finally came into view. It was a tallish man, unsteadily teetering as he slowly strode toward us. It was Shimada, drenched from head to toe. Ah, Shima. Duh. Emmy shot forward, intending to run toward him, but I grabbed her arm and held her back without even thinking about it. She turned and looked at me with a puzzled expression. I can't handle him. What? Don't tell me he did something to you. No. Thank goodness. At times like these especially, we really need to keep each other in the loop about everything that happens. She looked back at me again as she said as she said this, staring right into my eyes in an almost disciplinary manner. manner. It was the perfect guilt stare. I couldn't help but succumb to it, feeling bad for not having filled her in about the Shimada incident. Yeah, yeah. Shimada continued his slow, wet walk down the hall. Then all of a sudden, for no discernible reason, he simply fell forward, landing hard on his knees. Something was wrong with him. And while I loathed the man, I didn't want to see him suffer. Emmy and I were both poised to rush to his aid. When other figures randomly began appearing all around him, Figures of children, blue and ethereal, shimmering with their own light. That means he... Yep, he's fucked. <laughs> what? What? Where are they? We could barely even see Shamaya from our vantage point anymore, as his body was obscured almost completely by the backs of these ghost children. He wasn't moving, though, so it didn't seem like they were doing anything to him. But then he wasn't moving at all, which seemed highly suspicious. It occurred to me that maybe we should try to save him. I inched forward. He was still in exactly the same position he had been when he fell to his knees. He literally hadn't moved at all. Was he unconscious? Emmy and I looked at one another and nodded. It was a silent signal to move forward and do whatever we could to help. Ooh. The children vanished as we approached, revealing a horrific sight. Shimada's stomach had been flayed wide open. He was dead. The knife he flaunted earlier was jutting from the wound. It was almost ceremonial death, like that of a samurai who had thrown himself on his sword. Ah! Ah! No! No! Ah! Uh, ah! Uh. What were those children? How should I know? And they might still be nearby. Ah. Uh. Kazami, it's horrible. Shimada, Shimada is... Yuya, who had presumably rushed down to see what was wrong, calmly walked over to Shimada's body. He was checking for signs of respiration or pulse. He turned back to us... He turned back to face us again a moment later, and his facial expression said it all. Shamana really was dead. I was beginning to lose it. I just couldn't take any more of this. My friends and acquaintances were dying one by one. I guess I should say had died, but it didn't seem like it was over, not by a long shot. This is bad. There's something in here with us, something that's trying to kill us. Hell, it was doing more than trying. It had already succeeded twice over. I was scared. I was paranoid. I was shaking and crying and screaming inside. 
I was deathly afraid that something else would show up, and then it did. It was a little girl in a red dress, standing between us and the third floor staircase. I couldn't make out the expression on her face through her bangs, but I could literally feel the hatred in her eyes as she stared into our souls. Then she turned around and slid up the staircase into the third floor hallway. What? Emmy was turned the other way, so she hadn't seen the girl at all. She eventually followed our gazes, but by that time the girl was gone. She looked confused. That particular apparition looked a lot different from the other ghosts I'd seen, but there was still no doubt in my mind. She was definitely a ghost. What, what do we do about Okawa? We have to go get him. We, we have to get out of the school now. I'll go calm down. Wait. Yuya, I'll come with. It could be dangerous. You wait here. Dangerous? Well, that was the direction that the girl in the red dress went. And I guess Yuya didn't want me to be in harm's way. I nodded and watched his back recede into the darkness as he chased after Emmy. Pull yourself together. Pull yourself together, Toko. You know what they say. No weapon can pierce a calm heart. So, what's the most important thing right now? Ah! No! 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 Ah! Ah! What's going on? Why was Emmy screaming? I could hear voices now. Emmy and Okawa were having a heated argument. That's not possible. We have to leave him and run. We'll get caught if we don't. No! We can't just leave him behind. We have to. We have to take him to a hospital. But he's dead. No, he's not. He's dead. He's not. He can't be. Leave him and run? We'll get caught? That ghost girl must have been pursuing them. This is bad. I have to go help them. Ah, what the? Murderer! Katayama's body was sprawled unceremoniously on the landing, halfway up to the third floor, along with Okawa. At the top of the stairs stood Emmy, and in front of her, Yuya, with an imposing scowl on his face. I didn't understand any of this. What had just happened? Ah! Emmy let out another scream and came running toward me down the stairs. Okawa then seemed as if he had fallen and broken his arm. He was lopsidedly crawling toward me. It was almost as if he were trying to distance himself from Yuya. Murderer! Murderer! I ran to the base of the stairs to meet up with Emmy. I needed some sort of context here. Emmy, what happened? What's going on? Run! Run away! You'll be killed! K Kizami kicked him down the stairs out of the blue. What? I glanced up at Yuya, but his face was shrouded in darkness. I couldn't make out any expression at all. Ah! Ah! Okawa seemed to have reached his breaking point. He shot to his feet and took off behind me toward the second floor as fast as he could. Yuya kicked Okawa down the stairs? Why? Yuya, it's not true, is it? Slowly, he walked down to the landing. He was neither concerned nor scornful. His face was a blank slate. As soon as he reached my level, he bent down and began fiddling with Katayama's body, raising the arms and letting him drop, wiping blood from the ears and nose, then looking at it as if studying a specimen under a microscope. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? He was enjoying this? I finally got to see the emotion written clearly on his face. And it was elation? How was this not some scary dream? 
Yuya! Yuya! No! Tears began spilling from my eyes like water. I was shocked, confused, and I don't even know what else. Toko! Get away from him! Hurry! God, no! Emmy and I found ourselves standing in front of the door to the school infirmary. Shimaya took the key and lost it, so this room is no good. If we hit in a place like that, we'd be sitting ducks anyway. We, we need to go farther down to the first floor. The poor girl is frantic. I can't say I blamed her, but, well, something about this whole situation just didn't feel right to me. Emmy, I'm not... I'm still not sure we need to run. Huh? What? I just don't believe Yuya, kind and sweet Yuya, would be capable of doing something like that. But he really did kick him down the stairs. It happened. He kicked Okawa? How can he po How can that possibly be true? Fine. Do what you want then. I don't care anymore. With that, Emmy pushed me out of the way and ran past me toward the stairwell leading to the first floor. Ah, uh, Emmy. I have nothing more to say to you. You wouldn't believe me anyway since you're so convinced I'm lying. And off she went. I was now separated from every one of my friends. But was I really in danger? I mean, I was, but from Yuya? That just didn't seem right. Or more likely, I didn't want it to be. I wanted to believe that this was all just a misunderstanding. My legs were shaking and my head was swimming. I just stood there, unsure of where I should go or what I should do. And then there he was, right behind me. And in his hands was Shimada's huge knife, the one that was last seen jutting from Shimada's stomach. It was still dripping with blood. This was definitely... This definitely made matters more complicated. How could I doubt Yuya's guilt when he was holding something like that? Why did he even have it? How could he possibly bring himself to pull a knife from his friend's lifeless corpse? But I wasn't going to run. I turned around and I braced myself. I opened my mouth intent on discussing this rationally. If I ran away now, I felt like it would all be over. There would be nothing left to save. No one left to trust. But what could I possibly say to him? Yuya, I can't believe you're capable of this. Why? Why did you do it? My body was still visibly shuddering and my voice was breaking. I unconsciously taken an, an accus... Accus... Accusatory tone with him, which was not what I wanted. But it was too late to take it back now. I hoped he didn't notice, but he did. As soon as the word why slipped from my lips, his eyes gazed over. It was as if all the warmth and compassion I'd seen there before was trapped and drained. It was tapped and drained, leaving behind nothing more than an empty container. You too, huh? You're the same. The same as them. Then he just started muttering to himself and slowly walked right past me, as if I weren't even there. Yuya, wait! What is that in your hands? I thought I could put it to good use. In a lot of ways. Stop this. Get rid of that thing. No, I couldn't let this go on. I grabbed him by the arm and just clung to him. Pulling my full weight on his body to keep him from going any farther down the hallway. He was at a crossroads. About to walk down a path of no return. And I wasn't going to lose the kind considered Yuya I had fallen for. Unfortunately, the only tools I had at my disposal for stopping him were my feelings. And those just weren't going to be enough. Ah. I was so startled that it took me a moment before I even figured out what happened. It's the same in here, you know. That was the first time in my entire life that I had been, ever been punched in the head. And he put everything he had into it. Getting killed by this school? I couldn't focus. My brain was still rattling inside my skull from the impact. Or getting killed by me. The world was spinning. I looked up at him with spasmodic, twitchy, tear-filled eyes. There was no sign of remorse or compassion whatsoever. He looked like a, fe a feudal warrior 
clutching his sword and staring down at his enemy. The area all around my eye was throbbing. It hurt so badly and it felt so swollen and sore. I couldn't even imagine what it must have looked like. And he wasn't done with me. He got in closer and closer, grinning unnaturally as he raised his fist for a second strike. Let's test this out on you, shall we? You can be the first. Huh? Ah! I was running on pure instinct and adrenaline at this point. I shot to my feet and just forced them to carry me to safety. Somewhere, anywhere. He was going to kill me. And I was really going to... He was really going to kill me. God. I felt something rattling around uncomfortably inside my mouth. So I spit out into my hand. It was white. A single white tooth with blood red highlights at its root. That maniac had actually knocked out one of my teeth. God, my, my tooth. He was there just behind me. I panicked, tripping over my own feet and stumbling to the ground on the landing between the first and second floor. God. I had fallen on my backside, dropping my tooth on the ground next to me. I began slinking away from the encroaching figure of Yuya K Kazami. Save me, somebody, anybody, God, please. No, no. I was scooting backwards across the floor, too stiff, sore and scared to stand. But then my hand brushed across something small and metallic, a key. Ah, it's the infirmary key that Shimano lost. Ah, ah. Even with my hand right over it, I was shaking so badly that I couldn't barely work my fingers to get a grip. It was the most frustrating feeling in the world, and for a few seconds, that felt like hours, I just kept trying in vain to pick up that damn key. Finally, I slipped my finger through the ring. I had it, but this was my one and only chance. Scrambling to my feet, I somehow slipped past Yuya and ran back up to the second floor as fast as I could, force as I could force my shaky legs to carry me. I had the key. I could lock myself in. I could hide in the infirmary. Kazami didn't pursue, not right away. He just stood there, staring. Staring at the tooth that I had dropped on the ground. Staring intently, as if he was trying to make out what he was seeing. Her tooth? Heh. <laughs> He ate it? <laughs> uh, uh. There didn't seem to be any way to lock the door from the inside. I needed to find a hiding place before Yuya showed up. In the corner of the room? Under the bed, maybe? I was scanning every inch of the room as quickly as possible. Sizing up my surroundings, my eye stopped on one of the machine or the medicine shelves. Scissors. There are scissors in here. It felt like such a revelation, like the answer I was looking for. But what was I going to do with scissors? Was I going to fight? Fight who? Yuya? I wouldn't stand a chance. I decided to leave them there. I stepped back and crouched down behind the partitioning screen that was set up in the middle of the room. There's a ghost girl in the red dress coming. Yurebe had run back to the bathrooms on the third floor to warn Okawa about the imminent threat that was approaching. Surprisingly, he was still crouched on the ground, cradling Kayama's lifeless head in his arms. And he was still stubbornly insisting that if he were to leave that spot, he'd have to carry Kayama with him. That's not possible. We have to leave him and run. We'll get caught if we don't. No, we can't just leave him behind. We have to we have to take him to a hospital. But he's dead. No, he's not. He's dead. He's not. He can't be. What a stubborn foolish man I I I had enough. I decided I I'd rip Kayama's body from Okawa's arms and kick it down the stairs. 
It made one hell of a thud when it hit the landing. But he was already dead. So what did it matter? As long as it helped get Okawa moving, I didn't care. See? Look, he's dead. So get your ass off that floor and run. Open your eyes. Katayama is dead. We have to get out of here now. K Kazami? Yurebe was looking at me, and then at Katayama's body, and then back at me, as if she couldn't make up her mind which was, the, which was more interesting. But why was she looking at me? Did I have something on my face? Okawa, on your hand, was focused squarely on Katayama, or Okawa, on the other hand, was focused squarely on Katayama. He was trembling all over, but I thought he finally understood, and then he turned toward me. Murderer! Yelled like a madman and ran down the stairs toward his friend's body. He wasn't exactly in his right mind, however, so those last few wor those last few steps didn't quite go as planned. He tripped and fell quite hard next to Kayama. Ah! Ah! Murderer! Murderer! Emmy, what happened? What's going on? Murderer? Who, me? I wasn't the one who killed Kayama. Run, run away! You'll be killed! I see. And here. Getting killed by the school and getting killed by me are one and the same. We're all going to die here either way, after all. And that's it. And thus, Kazami lost his fucking mind. <laughs> Ah, the credits. Yeah, because chapter 7 is technically the last of the normal chapters, which makes chapter 8 the post-game chapter. But then again, you know, Kazami was actually fucked up from childhood to begin with. It's not like he just suddenly kind of realized, hey, you know what? Fuck it. <laughs> Now I have to admit, there's actually one incident I would have actually liked to have actually watched. Uh, they covered in what, chapter 2 or something like that? Or 3 or something like that, I forgot. But uh, they showed Sayaka after she got separated from Naho when they first came in here. But the one thing they never actually showed was uh, what Naho was doing when she first came here. Because all we know is that she came here... And she was like looking around looking for Kibiki. And eventually the darkness or the, the darkening overcame her. And by the time she tracked him down, she had actually killed him with her own two hands. And then even though she succumbed to the darkening and died physically, she woke up as a spirit and just started roaming around the place and started helping out everyone else who showed up. I would have actually liked to have seen the actual story in which they actually showed that. We're act, we actually play as Naho going around and shit looking for Kibiki and stuff. That would have been nice at least. And actually you know, see it from her point of view. But I guess it wasn't to be done in this game. And chapter 7 is clear. Oh look, another chapter 7. <laughs> 
Yeah, it's like it's not going to correct itself either. Oh, wait, there it goes. Huh. Prologue. Blood Drive chapter is now available. Hey, look at that. It's starting to become readable. <laughs> Tomokazu, Saguda, Yumi, Igarashi, Seiko, Yoshida, Satomi, Moria. Soundful testimonies unlocked in the bonus menu. Of course I'm going to save. And with that, I at least unlocked Chapter 8. I want to look at some shit real quick. Let's see what my uh, percentages and shit are. Unlock status. Cast interviews at 89%. Music percent at 76. Album percentage at 63. I guess you have. I guess you have to get some wrong ends in order to unlock some of them too. That would make sense. As far as music, I guess maybe the same is up true as well. One of the songs I wanted to unlock was the uh, the theme that plays during the fifth chapter from the original game. Like once you know, every once the uh, closed spaces start to break down and you basically gather everyone up and they'll switch around with pentagrams and shit. The theme that plays in that part of the game, well, they redo that in this game too. But I'm not sure what the song is called. I went through it earlier and shit between, uh, or before I played this part and went through the music and shit. And I noticed that even though I had already heard it in the game, it had not been unlocked yet. So I guess I have yet to unlock it. Go figure. In fact, there's actually quite a bit of music that still uh, hasn't been unlocked yet. And I've already done it pretty much the main game. That makes me think that some of that music can only be found if you take certain alternative paths or wrong ends in some of these chapters. Which means, even if I just do it normally, I probably won't be able to unlock everything. That's a real bummer. And this... <laughs> I guess you have to beat Chapter 8 to unlock that. Oh, oh well. So anyway, that's the end of part 11, and I'm finally done with chapter 7. All that's left to do is one more chapter, chapter 8, Blood Drive. And according to the walkthrough, there's no more name tags, and there's also no wrong ends, which means nothing bad can happen. It's just a bunch of exploration and stuff, basically. But I imagine there's going to be plenty of dialogue, so hell, it could actually turn out to be more than an hour, too. But anyway, yeah, so it's the end of part 11. I've beaten the main game, now it's got one more chapter to play. I hope you guys are enjoying the, the Let's Play so far, and hopefully you're looking forward to the last either part, or last two parts, depending. <laughs> more likely it'll be one part, because it'll probably just get dragged out. But yeah, hopefully you guys are looking forward to it, and hopefully I'll see you next time. This is Anime Brian, signing out.